I don't know if I'm right about this. I haven't seen any industry wide surveys, but it's my impression based on the clients that I work with and the people that I talk to that the commonest way to start a new project these days is to guess at the breakdown of services somehow and then create a separate repo for each one and then begin. This is a terrible idea. Somehow we've de demonized the idea of a shared repository. And for some people, the idea of what is sometimes called a mono repo has become almost a synonym for evil. Version control is just a tool. It's not a tool of torture, so it's not likely to be inherently evil. So what are the pros and cons of multi and mono repos? And yes, this is kind of another episode about microservices. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please do hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the content today, hit like as well. My new book, Modern Software Engineering, is doing rather well at the moment. Last week, it was the bestseller in three separate categories on Amazon. Uh, it's aimed at describing a lightweight science-inspired approach to software development. That significantly improves uh, our chances of delivering better software faster. And from the review feedback so far, it's helping people to think differently about software development and helping people to think that maybe we can apply engineering style thinking to software after all. Please do check out the links in the description below. I, I hope you find the book helpful. So what is a repository and what do we really mean when we think about that idea? I think it's really about defining a useful working scope for our software. If you use version control and if you don't, stop watching this video immediately and go and install a version control system right now. But if you do use version control, then what is it really for? What are the versions that we're controlling? The main thing that a version control system gives us is the ability to step back to safety when we make a mistake. This is a huge advantage. It means that we can make a change with confidence that we're never too far away from safety. It also gives us the ability to share our changes with other people more easily. I think that this feature is very much in second place to being able to step back to safety, but it's still extremely useful. And third, a version control system provides a shared safe place where we can store and protect our changes. We have a backup so we can be confident that we won't lose our precious code in the event of a hardware failure, for example. There are other advantages too, but I think that these three are the big ones. So given these advantages, how do we decide what to put into our repos? What's the right scope for version control? I'd argue that there are three models and one of them's done. We can put everything into one big repo. Let's call that a mono repo. I think that the term is the wrong idea, but we'll get to that later on. Or we can divide our system into smaller pieces and put each piece into a separate repo. This is the multi repo approach that's very common these days, but there are two versions of this. In one version, each of these repos contains an independent decoupled piece of software. That is, it doesn't change in any way that forces change on code that uses it that are in other repos. This is the microservices approach, and this is the most scalable way to build software, but that comes at a price. In other versions of a multi-repo, a pattern I call coupled modules, we divide the software up into pieces again, each in a separate repo, but they're sufficiently coupled to other pieces in other repos that we don't really trust the interactions between the pieces unless we test them all together. In case this is not clear, I think that this is the dumb one. Let's explore these ideas in a bit more detail to find out why. So we have our three advantages of version control. We can step back to safety, share code with others, and we can protect our assets. So version control records the history of changes to our systems. Here's a system made up of several pieces. We'll put all of these pieces initially into a single repo. 
Then that scope, that set of changes, represents a definitive version of that overall system. We know that version 1 of A works with version 2 of B and C and version 3 of D. There's no room for confusion here, assuming that the system works at all. We know that these pieces work together. If I make a change, let's say I change B to version 3 that breaks something, I can easily step back to the previous version or any other and then figure out what went wrong. If I make a change that means that I need to change my code and your code together, I can do that and the next time you sync you'll see my changes. So we can easily share even quite complex coupled changes that cross boundaries between our pieces. Would, when would I see a breakage? If it's all in a single repo, then I'll build and test everything together. Depending on our technology, I can probably spot breakages in my IDE before I even commit sometimes. But if not, then my tests that run during the commit stage of my deployment pipeline will find the problem. And if not then, then my acceptance tests will test the, test, test the whole system together will certainly find the problem. If I want a backup, well, all of the info that defines my system is contained within the repo. So that's simply a matter of backing the whole thing up. It represents a definitive statement of all of the dependencies, all of the code, everything. So all three of the advantages of version control are simple to access for a mono repo. Let's look at the multi-repo approach. In this model, each service lives in its own repository. So here is the same system, but now we'll store each piece separately. There is clearly a problem here. There is stuff that isn't in any of the repos. The communication between the pieces of our system and the specification of which versions of the pieces work together to make a whole system. These things aren't stored anywhere. As I said, there are two approaches to solving this problem. A defining characteristic of the microservice approach is that each piece is independently deployable. That is, you don't get to test these interactions between services before release. The implication of this is that you don't care which versions make up the system because you design the system so that it is tolerant of different versions. In this model, I can safely change any of these services independently of the others in confidence that my changes won't break any of them and also won't force any change on them either. You do this through design and in particular, the design of the interfaces between the pieces. These points are special, they're important and so they are treated with more caution and care. There are two strategies that help to achieve this. The interfaces are so well understood, so stable that they never need to change. Think Amazon S3 or TCP IP. Or you implement them in a way that they are flexible and can cope with change without breaking. Think web browsers and HTML. So how does this stand up to our desired properties of version control? Well, clearly, for changes to a single service, it's simple. I can easily step back to a previous safe version. But what happens if I introduce a change that does break one of these inter-service interactions in some way? Well, the first problem is, when do I find out? If my testing is good, maybe I have some contract tests to check for breaking changes. Uh, and then I'll find the problem on commit when my test fails in my deployment pipeline. If I don't have good tests though, then I won't find this until I'm in production when stuff breaks. In a real microservice environment, finding the cause of these kinds of failures can be very complex. Versions are changing all of the time. Production is a moving target. There is no definitive statement anywhere that version X of A works with version Y of B. After all, they never met until they met in production. So what version should you step back to? It's easy to imagine complex scenarios where it's impossible to step back. The answer is to work in ways that let you roll forward rather than step back. And this is a common approach in microservices teams. But now we've given up one of the big advantages of version control. That may be a worthwhile sacrifice if you're gaining from the advantages. 
but it's always a cost. Organizations that are good at microservices are clever at not breaking interactions between services because that is the only game in town really. But that is always extra work and requires a degree of design sophistication to achieve. What about sharing code? In a monolith, everyone has access to the same code. In microservices, that's not necessarily the case. So if I make a change to my service that also requires you to change yours, it's going to be hard for me to know that that's the, tr that's the case. But even then, I can't make a cha that change myself without having access to your repository. And now I have to coordinate the work between two separate repos. This is not impossible, but it's more complex and slower than having everything in the same code base. So this slows me down. It either prevents me from making such changes altogether or it makes them harder work. So this works against sharing changes easily. Let's be absolutely clear. None of this means that software development is impossible under these circumstances. It just means that things move more slowly and that there's more friction. Once again, the answer in microservices is to attempt to eliminate such coordinated changes altogether. So we're back to stable interfaces or very flexible, loosely coupled APIs that are more difficult to design. What about protecting the code? Well, again, easy, maybe even trivial for a single service, but what about the system as a whole? Remember, there's no version control record of which versions of the services work together and no version control record of which versions are in production at any given point. So we can't back up the whole system. In a microservice world, this is fine. It's not a problem at all because remember, our services don't care what versions the others are at. It's a moving target. That's OK, but it's a more complicated thing. In essence, a microservice approach makes no sense unless it is a distributed approach. The goal of microservices is to scale development, and it's a wonderful at that. It's the most scalable approach, but it comes at a significant cost of complexity and overhead. This is a worthwhile trade-off if you're Amazon or Netflix, but maybe not so much if you're a smaller team that doesn't need the scalability. So what about the other multi-repo approach, the coupled modules thing? This is the approach that everybody prefers the sound of, but they like it because they want to have their cake and eat it too. Coupled modules doesn't really make any sense at all. The coupled modules will once again allocate a piece of our system to a dedicated repository. As before, what about the conversations between modules and the versions of the pieces? I think that the idea behind this approach goes something like this. We can't imagine building and testing all of our stuff together as a monolith and being able to get results fast enough. So we'll break our system into pieces because that will make our lives easier. Then we can build and test each piece in isolation much more quickly. But we also can't imagine designing the pieces to be independent like microservices. So we'll test all of our pieces together before we release. We'll test those inter-service inter interactions and we'll need to store the versions of the pieces that we know work together somewhere. Hmm. So now we've got a monolithic system, same as before. But this time, with all of the impedance and friction of a microservice system without any of the benefits. The pieces aren't independently deployable and they aren't independently de developable either because we don't know if our changes really work until all of the integration tests have run. So as I said, we're firmly back in monolith land. But actually, it's worse than that. By separating our coupled modules into separate repositories, we've eliminated several useful optimization techniques that we make sense of monoliths, but that don't work for multi-repos. For example, in a monolithic build, we can take advantages of things like incremental builds. We can use techniques like static typing to spot mistakes even earlier than continuous integration would. I think that coupled modules is just a dumb approach. It's like the worst of all worlds with none of the benefits. But it's incredibly common. In fact, my experience is that most teams that claim to practice microservices are in reality doing coupled modules of some form. 
The test is always, can you deploy your microservice without testing it with others first? I think that this gives us a strong clue of a better way to think about this problem. The deployability of our system is absolutely key. I think that our aim should be to make the evaluations of our system definitive. We create deployment pipelines that determine the releaseability of our changes. They are definitive for release. If the pipeline says everything's good, we're happy to release the change into production. If a single test fails, then our pipeline responds with not fit for production. To have that level of confidence, we need feedback that we gather from our test to be definitive for release. That means that we need to test everything that needs testing before release within the scope of the pipeline. So the scope of evaluation for a pipeline is fixed by the releaseability of our software. And the easiest way to manage that is to make a pipeline service a single repository that defines that scope. This means the scope of a single repository is determined by the releaseability of your system or service. A pipeline evaluates an independently deployable unit of software, and that is the easiest to accomplish when that independently deployable unit is stored in a single repository. So monoliths are fine. Real microservices are fine too. But coupled modules are only very inefficient monoliths in disguise. Your independently deployable units don't have to be microservices. I've used that tag as a kind of shorthand. But I think that the idea of them being independently deployable is the more important idea, ultimately. If you have a big subsystem or even a small library, if they are, those things are independently deployable, they may sensibly be stored in their own repository with their own deployment pipeline. If the contents of your repo aren't independently deployable, I think you're almost certainly wasting time and effort. Thank you very much for watching.